What up, Mafia Nation? I'm Princess Billy. And I'm DJ Scale. And we're here to do a new reaction video. Let's get it. Moments lost, don't argue with me. <laughs> Hi, kids. So today we're going to be doing a Sabaton history. Uh, apparently Ryan has actually watched this in the past. Uh, I don't know. Who did you watch it? I watched the music video when it first came out. It was a solo. But now that they have a history for it, these guys are going to watch the history, and then they're going to watch the music video as well. I love history. Yeah, Shane, you want to explain to him a little bit about what Sabaton history is and how we do these? Hmm. So there's this guy that's dressed up all cool in this video that you can't see yet, but you will. Um, his name is Indy Nightel, and Indy is going to explain history in a way where you can enjoy learning, because he's got a great way of explaining everything, and, and the mapping and the, the digital imagery that they use explains quite a bit about what's going on. And then when you hear the music behind it, I mean, you're a Sabaton fan, that's... Part I love Sabaton. That's part of the reason why we're doing this. The other part is, is I'll explain to you later. Um, but this is so much cooler because it goes much more in depth than just the music. Like it actually explains where and when and how everything of, of whatever that song is written about. Nice. And, and today we're doing a uh, Live Garde. Um, uh, live Gardet? Live Gard. No, no, tease, tease silence. Live Garde. Live Garden? No, live God. Lasagna. <laughs> he set you up so good. That's great. Well then. Tomato, tomato. Before we get to this video, though, go ahead and subscribe, kids. Hit the notification bell. Ding. And go ahead and like, comment, and share for everybody. Give us some of these. Who wants the thumbs? All of the thumbs. <clears throat> what if there's a guy that doesn't have a thumb? Then I at least want one. What if he doesn't have anything? I want the finger. Okay. So let's check this out, buddy. He, he's new. I'm Indy Nidell. I'm Per from Sabaton. And welcome back to Sabaton History. Oh, that's the part this that I forgot. It's about. By the way, throughout the entire story. In. Before, before. <laughs> All right. So, so they also get. Uh, Indy has has one of the <coughs> members of the band <laughs> that comes in, and he goes through the entire story with them. And actually, they're they're extremely extremely smart gentlemen. I like that. From Sabaton, and welcome back to Sabaton history. This is about. Leave Garden. Oh, the T was there. I'm wrong. I know I'm right. I'm always right. I'm Princess Billy. There was a tradition in the Swedish military that the chaplain would end prayer with the words Gud bevara konungen and fadern as landet. God protect king and fatherland. And the soldiers would answer, Gud hörde, may God listen. Such a devotion to the Swedish monarchy was nowhere stronger than in the Swedish Livgarde. The Livgarde, also known as Högvakten, the royal guards, or Slotsvakten, the palace guards, is one of Europe's oldest extant military formations still operating. Their history goes back to the origins of modern Sweden itself. Back when Gustav Eriksson fought a bloody war of liberation for the dissolution of the Kalmar Union. In 1523, when Eriksson was crowned as Swedish King Gustav Vasa, he chose his 16 most loyal men for service in his royal bodyguard. In times of turmoil and war, when loyalties had a price and trust was hard to find, those 16 men were sworn to defend the Swedish king with their lives. From this time onwards, the Swedish royal guard would remain at the king's side to keep their monarch safe. Over the centuries, the guard would take on different names, weapons, and uniforms, but their duty remained unchanging. It began with the Royal Drabant Corps, Kungliga Drabant Koren, 
which has made up the core of the household guard since 1523. The term Drabant is related to the German Landsknechte and describes men who traditionally fought with halberds and estoks. And for a long time, the term Drabant was synonymous with soldiers closely guarding their king. Well, until it became cooler to use the French name. So, just because of what they just said, do you know what he just said about what, what weapons they were using? Do you understand what that was? They switched. Oh, like the escots. Or at, at, at Scott, I can't pronounce what he just said. No, I'll try it. No, it didn't did it. work. I just did. No, try it. it I did. It, at, it didn't at, work. At, at, at what? At Scott's. Wrong. See? Go on. <laughs> So do you know what kind of sword that is? No. Uh, it's it's something similar to, uh, you know, like uh, the fencing swords. But instead of it being flimsy, it's sharp. It's just really thin. So, it's for, so it'll hurt. It's for quick stabbing. I believe. If I'm wrong, tell me. But I'm pretty positive. He's probably that's, wrong. That's what it's it's probably not the right thing. Oh, similar. So it's a really sharp needle. Pretty, pretty much, but it's that a That would kind of really hurt a but lot a if you got stabbed a bunch of times. I'm not a fan of that. Musketeer style. You know musketeers? Three musketeers? Also one, one for all. Yeah. That type of blade. I don't, I don't see that really doing a really good job. Like against like a real big sword, like no, pirate that's, sword. I mean that that's pretty much what everybody had at, at that point in time. But that, like that's what they were like armed with, because I mean hey, it's weaponry be what it is. Their king. Well, until it became cooler to use the French name Garde du Corps. In Sweden, much of the military tradition came from citizen cavalry, like the Stockholm Military Corps, which was formed in wartime for the defense of the capital. The Royal Drabant Corps took on many forms and temporary regiments, like Drabantene Koningens Hofregimente, the King's Courts Regiment, the yellow uniformed Gule Brigaden, Kungliga Majestats Livgarde, and Koningens Livgarde, until the turn of the 18th century, when they became the Svea and Jutta Livgarde, the predecessors of today's Livgarde. They were disbanded for a time in 1821 until King Oscar I reinstated the Drabans as a ceremonial guard unit for his coronation in 1844. To this day, they wear historic uniforms, like the breastplates and the knee-high boots. They even wear the so original jackets of the made gun. out of moose hide no. from Carolean times. Each guard point. was outfitted with the best weapons, uniforms, and horses available to keep the Swedish royal family safe. They were elite, loyal, and obedient to the core. Yeah, but the, and their lives were expendable the if it meant was, catching a bullet for the king. Their primary task in peacetime was to guard Stockholm Castle horse, from spies and, that's that's and assassins and pesky citizens with radical ideas. On their journeys through the country, the mounted royal guard accompanied the royal family Horses. and looked out for their yeah. safety. Told you. In 1619, <laughs> Told you. a royal corps of halberdiers was formed whose main task was to guard the palace in Stockholm. During the Thirty Years' War, this also accompanied Gustavus Adolphus into battle and in 1633 came back to Stockholm with his lifeless body. The halberdiers stayed at the palace and became the corps of the guard regiment for Queen Christina and her royal household. Around the same time, Swedish general... Why do all paintings from that time era, everybody looks the same? Every person has the exact same face. The Mona Lisa, that person, that's, that looks like the Mona Lisa. That's fairly close, I mean... <laughs> there it is. Christina. Mona Lisa. Um, I, I don't really know. I think it has a lot to do with the time Dude, you cut the hair part. off. That's one of the guys. I mean... Every single person was the same. Are they all twins? I mean, Am I missing something? I don't want to... I don't want to go into a whole different, like, history thing, but there was a lot of inbreeding. Is this the Illuminati? I don't know. I don't know. Listen, listen, you're, you're good jumping in. Let's get back to this video. I don't, I don't know what's going on. That, you're right. Around when we talk time, about art, I'll, I'll have a conversation with you. I can't. Look, that guy does not look like, like anybody. <laughs> that doesn't look like That's anybody else. That's the Monopoly else. guy. <laughs> that guy doesn't look like literally anybody else I've ever you seen. You give him one of those little dingy mabobs? 
Maybe maybe she just had one of those faces, man. I don't know. You take away the beard and put some more hair on it. <laughs> it's a little more Picasso style, I guess. Getting really no, aggressive it's about Picasso, art. Really. It's more yeah, LA. It's, huh? <laughs> he's really getting really aggressive about art. Yeah. I know. It's pretty fun. It's more Da Vinci. Oh, whatever. Sure. Introduce grenadiers into the royal guards. Men chosen for the grenadiers were already large and imposing soldiers whose task it was to hurl heavy grenades large into the enemy ranks. Large and imposing soldiers. You to wouldn't be allowed to further signify Billy. their status as an elite unit, they wore large miters <sighs> or bearskin caps. From 1868, they're all Swedish tall and lanky, just like me. have carried the king's own life company banner. Later in the 17th century, oh, the dragoons yeah. were introduced into the, the Royal Guard. Although the dragoons were mounted troops, they were generally classified as infantry on horseback, mounted infantry. Oh, that's what I'm talking Armed about. with short barreled carbine rifles, they were fast and flexible and were often given security duties. In 1906, the Swedish dragoons became officially known as the Mounted Royal Guard. While Sweden, for most of its guy, history, Billy. recruited its army Princess through a general Billy. allotment system, the soldiers of the Livgarde were recruited directly into service. Training for the guards was very tough with naturally a high focus on discipline as the soldiers would represent the Swedish monarchy to the public. You would have make it. And it was You're a right. very desirable place to be. Not only did That's it pay well, but serving in the Royal Guard opened further doors for a soldier's career through the connections they made. The prestige and status that came with a place in the Guard was comparable to similar royal household units in the rest of Europe at the time. Although the majority of the recruits came from the Swedish mainland, the Royal Guard was also open to recruits from the Finnish and German provinces, as well as suitable candidates from foreign countries. Officers who had honorably ended their service would usually go on to command regular provincial regiments. During wartime, the Royal Guard was sent to the battlefield. From the Swedish War of Liberation in the 1520s to the rise of the Swedish Empire in the Thirty Years' War, up until its in glorious end in the Russo-Swedish War at the end of the 18th century. Whenever the Swedish king went into combat, the Royal Guard was with him. Under King Charles XII, Karl den Tolfte, Did you see that guy? Let's, let's that do this again. The Royal Guard was with him. Under King Charles... Okay, so going back to that the That guy thing. is the exact same face as that woman. Negative. Bull. I don't think so. You pull up that lady. I want to get slides. Saying, man, I, I want to do some investigating. I feel like the eyes might be. No, might be I'm on to something. <laughs> I'm on to something big here. We'll get back. To I'm this. gonna get to the bottom, and I don't care if I gotta get to the top to figure Billy's it out. Billy's gonna investigate. Well, the twelfth Billy conspiracy the Royal Guard reached their numerically largest strength. Up to 2,600 uh. men served as his personal vanguard in the battles of the Great Northern War. Traditionally. The Royal Guard served on the far right of the battle line. This was historically the most honorary and also the most dangerous position on the field. And it was common for the regiment to take heavy casualties. And more than once, it was completely wiped out, like at the defeat oh, at Poltava. But time and time again, it was rebuilt and reestablished. With the end of the Swedish Empire, the Royal Guard returned to primarily guard duty once more. The palace in the second half of the 18th century was a home of treachery and harbored a good amount of corrupt officials, conspirators, at, and would be assassinated. Look at that building. That would be a sweet band name. Home of Treachery. Home of Treachery. That would be a cool band name. I agree with you. Look at that building. It's a very nice building. This is ridiculously huge. Does it look like a factory? It does kind of look like a factory. 
Saxons. It is like a balance. the old Praetorian Guard of Rome, the Swedish Royal Guard became often directly <laughs> involved in such intrigues. During the coup d'etat in 1772, the, the Royal Tata. Guard sided with Gustav III and overthrew the government in favor of the monarchy. Same. But when Gustav IV All right, that guy began totally. degrading the Royal Guard and even threatened to... That's the guy from the Pink Panther. <laughs> Movie references are not really cool. The guy from the comic book. The Pink Panther. To reduce them to a regular line <laughs> regiment. Well, Sorry. unsurprisingly, the Just Royal Guard was seven. not that eager to defend Peace him paper. when another coup led to his downfall. Turns out, insulting one's bodyguard when you're already unpopular was a bad idea. Very well dressed well, soldiers. With the end of the Finnish War in 1809, Sweden's time as a great military power was up. Still, the Royal Guard remained, guarding the royal family in Stockholm. Before the advent of a professional police force, they were also in charge of overseeing criminal prosecution and in command of firefighting. The mounted guard remained as the escort of the royal family on their trips until the spread of automobiles reduced the need for escorts on horseback. For most of its history, the Royal Guard was stationed in the capital itself, but housed individually by the citizens of Stockholm. It was not until 1803 that they moved into barracks, and not until 1888 when the Svea and Jota lifeguards got their own housing built. In 1942, for the first time How since their entry into need? Stockholm, they were moved further north, away from well. the city. In 2000, the Svea <laughs> lifeguard was officially rooms. disbanded and most of its staff was incorporated into the modern Day of Garden. Nowadays, the professional Royal year. Guard is divided into two detachments, one serving at Stockholm Palace and the other at Drottningholm Palace just outside of town. The regiment consists of light infantry, security, and guard battalions. They stand guard during Sweden's state ceremonies, accompany the Minister of Defense on official visits, or honor the visits of foreign military commanders to Sweden. They are also a huge tourist attraction. It's true. Between April and August, the changing of the guard attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists. The mounted squadrons ride out in traditional light blue full dress uniforms and silver Pickelhaube helmets, <laughs> while the guards on foot wear their dark blue uniforms with black Pickelhaube helmets. On their way from the barracks to the center of Stockholm, they are accompanied by the Lifeguards Dragoon Music Corps. Today, That's the sweet. ceremonial duties of the Royal Guard are open to all parts of Sweden's armed forces, even the home guard and the voluntary units. For example, in 2009, it was Lottorna's turn, the Swedish Women's Voluntary Defense Organization. Usually, each unit takes over the protective and ceremonial duties of the Royal Guard for five to seven days a year. Sweden has enjoyed peace for many, many decades, but the Royal Guards, the Livgarde, remains. Although they are now modernized and mechanized, the core, they have not changed. From Gustav Vasa in 1523 to today's Swedish king, Karl den Sexton de Gustav, the Livgarde is there to safeguard Stockholm and the monarchy. That's pretty cool. Right? Uh, okay, Per, uh, I have two questions, but I'm going to say them all as one question, okay? All right. <laughs> why this? Why now? So, uh, we're coming up to the 500 years anniversary of Sweden. Right. The modern Sweden, yeah. And uh, that kind of requires some celebration. Right. Yay! <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, I am a Swedish citizen now, so it's so my you're, country you're, too. You're, you're uh, invited to the celebration. Yeah. 
we are no longer invited to the celebration, but we were invited to be part of creating the celebration for this. You, you were specifically, they said, let's get Sabaton. Yeah, uh, they asked us if we would be able to write a song for one of the oldest military regiments in the entire world, which okay. is the Swedish Leib Gardet. Okay. Or, and the, the regiment asked you or someone else asked you to write it? Uh, they, they are part of the Swedish army. Okay. So the request came from the Swedish army. And uh, we normally don't do songs by request, except when okay. we did Bismarck and uh, we have done uh, so something like that in the past as well. But we usually don't do songs on request. We come with an idea and we do it no matter what. Right. Yeah, that sounds like you. But in this case, it was so many interesting things. I mean, we wanted to cover it. We wanted to sing about this. It felt like a natural, okay, this is a good subject for a Sabaton it, song. Yeah, it's a really good film. And the 500 years anniversary makes for an absolutely uh, legal or good cause to do the song at the well, moment. So exactly. everything was there. So we said yes to, to the Swedish army that let's go on. and. We, we will write this song. And, um, but after a while, they returned to us and said, we have to back out. So we were, of course, disappointed yeah. that after we started to prepare for these plans and prepare for writing this song, and then they back out. But we didn't back out. No. Now we are doing it. Originally, we planned to do the song with the support of the Swedish Army. Now yeah. we do the song anyway. OK. And um, it's, um, as I said, it was a good subject even without anybody asking us to do it. So that's why we did it. But this song, it's not part of another whole Swedish album or anything. It's, it's not part of a, a new album. I mean, you, you could fit it in. The, the Swedish Leave Guard is, uh, you know, it's 500 years yeah, of history. Yeah, yeah, sure. And uh, we, we didn't want it to focus on a specific event. We wanted right. to focus on, on this uh, military regiment. But even though that cause, you could fit it in to the Karola Skrex album. Yeah, totally. Yeah, sure. And. Uh, uh, so we, we mentioned a couple of the battles during, uh, during the Swedish Empire where, for sure, Leif Gardet was. Okay. I, I haven't got to read the lyrics yet, so this is news to me, actually. So. Yeah, and, and uh, at the moment, we haven't heard how it is, because right now, as we are sitting here, yeah. Joachim is in the studio singing this song yeah. right now. Right like now. He even asked a few minutes ago when he can come here not to disturb us yeah. because obviously I guess he's ready with the song, which sounds awesome. So we might actually get to hear something rough today even. Maybe, Maybe. we're lucky. Do you know what occurs to me? You say the Swedish army asked you to do this and then they backed out. Now, in the Wolfpack Part 2 episode, you explained to everyone in the world about mm. your lack of compulsory military service by trying to be crazy because you couldn't be a fighter pilot or, or, or a submarine ace. But that couldn't have anything to do with it. Could it? Could it? <laughs> Could it? But that's, uh, that's, that's very interesting. So but intense. When, when, when the song is finished, do you expect it to be taken up or by, by the military? Or is this just like what happens, happens? Or? What, whatever happens, happens now. I mean, the song, everybody's able to enjoy the Sabaton songs. And uh, I mean, obviously, we write the songs for, for our fans. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, I, I hope and I, I believe that our fans are going to like it because it's a kick-ass song. When it's the 500th anniversary, do you know of any specific celebrations or things they're going to do? Have, are, have they asked other bands or things or artists to do stuff? As far as you know, I've heard, I don't know anything about this. Um, well, I was part of plans. Yeah. I was sitting together with the Swedish Army planning activities around this, which obviously are not, we are not part of, but I will not reveal them. But okay. I, I was aware of some of their plans, yes. Okay. And uh, the, um, I hope they go through with all the plans. I hope they do everything that they have said. Uh, I'm just sad we will not be a part of it. It yeah. would have been cool, but we, we'd be fine anyway. We're Sabaton, we're touring <laughs> the world. And we, as we are you busy said, anyway. <laughs> yeah, but as you said, other than being busy, if they'd never asked you, then they never would have gotten this kick-ass song. Well, that is it for today, but we'll see you next time, whenever that may be, here on the Sabaton History Channel.
thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Please remember to click that little bell so that you get updates and notifications once we release new episodes. Jak się masz? Well then, I'm excited. Like that was really cool. I cannot wait to see the video. I I am really pumped to hear this. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. We're gonna check that out in a second here. But I'm so excited as well. Uh, there's a. They said that they're going on tour all over the world, right? Yep. So they're coming to our hometown in Youngstown, and I work at the venue, and I'm gonna try and. I want, to, I want to go see them. So, I want to go see them. So I think we're going to try and get to come out and see them. Yeah, we want to see you. We can do. We can, if we get a chance to come out and see you, we're definitely going to come do it. Um, but if you guys want to see us go see them, tell us. Down here in these little just like comments down there, say whatever you want to. Tell us whether or not we're idiots, whether it's like cause the little the sword thing that I was talking about earlier. Oh, you're pointing at all the social medias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go to the social medias, too. Check those out. Yeah, we need to go to those. You need to go to the social medias? No, everybody needs to go to those. Everybody needs to go to those. We all need to get likes. Yeah. YouTube videos. Absolutely. Also down there in the description, there's a little link right there for the duds. You can go grab some shirts and stuff. You can't buy these ones or these ones. No. But they have some cool stuff on there. Like they got backpacks and, and like mugs. Hair. Mugs. Yeah. Hats. Yeah. Hats. I think we're we're supposed to be getting shoes still. I don't know if that's actually. Hat. I don't know. I might I might just want shoes really bad. I don't know. I want shoes. I think you just want shoes. I think I do too. Well, kids. Um, do you guys have any other recommendations? Do you guys have any other recommendations for us? Send if you them. do, put them in that comments. Any donations will get you to the top of the list. Absolutely. You make a donation, it'll bump you up to the top. We'll make sure that we get you out there and you get a shout out as well. Until, until we see you again. Until next time. I love you. Bye. Love, we love you.